In this lecture, we are going to discuss the final two phases of business plan, which are first, required startup capital, second, types and sources of startup capital. Let us begin with required startup capital. It is absolutely necessary that you know how much startup capital you need and where you will get it before you start setting up your business. So you will need startup capital for capital investments and working capital. What capital investments do you need? A capital investment is the purchase of an asset for the business that is expensive and lasts for a long time. Also, the capital investment needed can be divided into the following two categories. First, business premises. Second, equipment. Business premises. Of course, the size and location of business premises depends on the type of business. So, when you know what sort of premises you acquire, you need to decide if you should build the premises or buy the premises or rent the premises or run the business from your home, for example. Building or buying your own property can be the best option if your business has special requirements for the building or the location of the building. However, this option will require a lot of capital and it often takes a long time. Renting. Renting the business premises needs less capital than building or buying. It's also more flexible because it's easier to change the location of your business if you are renting. But it's not as secure as owning your own property. Running your business from home. Running your business from home is obviously the cheapest option. It can be a good way to start until your business is successful. However, separating a business issues from family issues can be difficult if you are working from home. Equipment. Buying equipment may require a large capital investment when you start up the business. Instead of buying equipment, you can sometimes lease it for a specific time period. You would make monthly payments for the duration of the lease. And you should compare the cost and benefits of asset loans that may be needed to buy the equipment and leases. Note that if you decide to lease equipment, you will not have to add the cost of new, of new equipment onto the amount of initial capital required, but you must add the lease payments to your calculations for working capital. What working capital do you need? Working capital is the money you need to pay for the expenses generated when your business starts production. Some businesses will need enough working capital to cover all costs for a few months or even a year or more. Also, you must estimate how long it will take before your business will receive sufficient revenues to cover your ongoing expenses. Plan to keep a bit more working capital than you think you need. Note that you will need working capital to cover 
first stocks of raw materials and finished products. Second, promotional activities. Third, salaries. Fourth, rent. Fifth, insurance. Sixth, loan or lease payments. Seventh, other costs, of course. Types and sources of startup capital. When you have estimated how much startup capital you need for your business, the next question is where to get that capital. The most important types of startup capital are owner's equity and loans. Owner's equity. The equity or the contribution from owner to start the business is the private money that is put into the business. An entrepreneur's savings can be a possible source of owner's equity. Entrepreneurs can use targeted savings accounts to accumulate some or all of the funds they will need to start their business. Savings that an entrepreneur doesn't want to invest in the business could serve as cash collateral for a loan. Also, the owner's equity is called risk capital because the owners are risking their own money on the business. Whatever form of business you start, you will have to invest some of your own money. Note that if you don't have enough money yourself, you can consider finding a partner or partners who are interested in, in investing in the business. You should not allow the partner to own more than half of the business because if you own less than 50%, you will forfeit the right to make decisions for the business. Loans. You will have to repay the amount borrowed and you will probably have to pay interest charges or fees. Also, you can pay the loan back either in installments or all at once, depending on the agreement with the lender. Note that if you borrow money from a lending institution, you usually will have to comply with two major requirements. First, the institution will want to see a viable and a clear business plan with a business idea that is believable and feasible. Of course, an unclear business plan will leave a bad impression and you make it difficult for the lending officer to grant loan. Second, the lending institution will probably also need some kind of collateral to make sure that you repay your loan. If you cannot repay the loan, the lending institution has the right to take possession of the collateral instead. Machines and other equipment in your business can sometimes be used as collateral. Note that if you don't own any of these, you may also use your home or the home of a family member as collateral. But this is a big risk which must be thought through very carefully. Here are a number of different sources you can access when you are applying for a loan to start your business. First, banks. Several banks have specialized departments for giving loans to small businesses. To obtain loans from banks, you need a viable business idea presented in a well thought out business plan and some kind of collateral. Second, government credit 
schemes. Many governments have lending programs to help entrepreneurs who want to start small businesses. You may not need collateral for these government loans, but the requirements for your business plan are just as strict as with the banks. Third, microfinance institutions. These financial service providers focus on the low income market and exist in many legal forms, sometimes as banks, sometimes as regulated non-bank financial institutions, and sometimes as unregulated non-profit organizations. They have more flexible collateral and documentation requirements than mainstream banks, but loan amounts are relatively small, especially for first-time borrowers. Also, they rarely offer start-up business loans, but may make capital available to an entrepreneur through other loan products based on the entrepreneur's household cash flow. Fourth, membership-based associations. To be able to borrow from these associations, you will need to be a member and to buy shares. You will also be required to have money deposited in an association savings account. Note that there are different types of loans that, that entrepreneurs can access from the different sources. For example, startup loans and asset loans and housing loans and consumption loans and emergency loan and supplier credit. Entrepreneurs should try to find information about such loans and from where they can access it best.